When is an indie game not an indie game? Well, in fact, when it's a child of light. The new game by the creative director of Far Cry 3 and taken through Ubisoft's professional game wrangler. I'm Dan Dawkins for CVG. I'm discussing this topic with Matt Gilman of Games Master, who's reviewed the game. Matt, hello. Hello. Yeah. Now, why would you say that this isn't strictly an indie game, and what can we expect from Child of Light? Well, I mean, it has the trappings of an indie game. It's quite compact. It's, um, it's obviously it's a digital download only, um, but it's very obviously once you get into the meat of the game, it's been through, like you say, the Ubisoft Wrangler. It has the the trappings of a much much bigger game, hmm. uh, something like say even as big as Far Cry or um, a Far Cry Three or, uh, or or an Assassin's Creed game even. Now this isn't obviously the scale of a, like an Assassin's Creed 3, we're looking at what, like a 10 hour completion time for this that, game? That's right, yeah, you'll be finished in about 10 hours. Now, can you condense to my stupid brain <laughs> quite what this game is, if you had to pitch it to me in a sentence or two? Okay, it's it's a Japanese RPG that's, that's not a Japanese RPG. Ah! Ah! It defies uh, that, the, that kind of um, classification. Okay, so it is a it is a fairy tale. It is a story of a young girl um, Aurora in uh, 18th century Austria. Of course. Uh, of course. <laughs> who, um, at the start of the story, slips into a coma. And this whole story, this turn based battle um, fueled um, narrative, flows through in this kind of fantasy land which has presumably been created in her mind. Um, and yeah, it's got the, the kind of JRPG feel to it. It's, like I say, it's got those turn based battles. It has this cast of characters that join you on the way. You go on quests. Um, and you um, eventually kind of go through this narrative arc, um, but um, but it's it's condensed into this very very visually kind of led um, ten hour uh, experience, which is almost like a like a storybook. I think when they were talking um, before release about how um, they visually kind of um, embarked on it, they they were looking back at books from the 18th century right? Um, to look at that kind of visual um, uh, style. Now, as you play, you do develop new skills. It's like an upgrade tree system of some kind, isn't there? There is. I mean, it's interesting. When you when you start out, you are uh, this young girl, Aurora, and she has... It, it, the skills are one of the more annoying things, actually, about the game. Yeah. Um, you have a skill tree, which um, it feels quite arbitrary. It's There's not a lot of depth to it. It's quite a linear thing. You... You unlock new, new kind of plus two magic, plus three defense um, mm. style stats rather than full blown. Okay, you start off by hitting things, and now you can, you know, explode them or whatever. Um, so in a sense, the skill tree doesn't necessarily feel as, as deep as it could do. Um, what makes the battles actually really uh, good fun is the fact that you have this little time gauge which runs along the bottom of, bottom of the screen, and and there's the, this little red area at the end of the time gauge. So during every action you take. You have to pay really close attention to where all these other monsters are, are, are on this time mm. gauge and how soon their attacks are going to be um, firing up against you. So there's this neat kind of um, active battle system which isn't necessarily backed up by um, a really deep uh, skills skill tree system. I like the sound of the co-op mode. Can you explain more about that? Sure. Um, I mean, I play. I actually played most of the game with with members of my family. So you can play the game with one pad, playing uh, as Aurora. And there's this little um, Firefly character who's um, controlled either using one of the analog sticks on a control pad mm -hmm. or the Wii U gamepad, or even on the PS4 we, we were using the, uh, the touchpad. And um, this little dude uh, floats around the screen and you can use him to heal characters on the screen or, or to collect uh, power-ups that are around the screen, a bit like Murphy from uh, Rayman Legends. Okay. Or um, or even like the star mode from from Super Mario Galaxy. So is the key player doing like the quote unquote heavy lifting? Exactly. Uh, and the other player. So would this benefit like let's say f in my scenario, I'm a dad uh, and I've got a lesser skilled child who might want to play with me. Might this be something we could do together? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I certainly like the idea of um, of the dad taking control of all of the tiny minute kind of skill tree choices, and then the kid just wafting this Wii Wiimote or, or whatever around the screen. Okay, well this sounds great, the game obviously looks great. Who's going to buy it? Um, who's going to buy it? <laughs> is it for like, is it going to satisfy like classic JRPG fans? I think in terms of the length, no. I think that it, it is quite a short game. Like you say, 10 hours. 
I think people who are looking for something that's going to occupy them for weeks and weeks and weeks, a traditional JRPG fair, are going to walk away a little bit disappointed. But this is really compact, really nice, nice story, which is well told, um, although the ending's a bit, uh, a bit touch and go. The the this story is so kind of compact and nicely put together that you can share it with someone with a less, um, let's say. Not not such a long attention span. <laughs> okay, it sounds like the ultimate. Like you say, it's the <laughs> ultimate family RPG yeah, yeah, exactly set right. in eighteenth century Baroque worlds, <laughs> which is like a JRPG but isn't. Hmm. That that's really crystal crystal clear. Well, the good news is the game is out tomorrow, the 29th of April. It's out on pretty much every single format. It's out on PC, PS3, PS4, Wii U, Wii U. It's a wow. Wii U game, wow. Go. Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Now the big caveat is really that it's £11.99. So at that price, you know, this you know this is a worthwhile experimental purchase for someone and it's it's good at what it does, being an offbeat JRPG but that's 10 hours long. Certainly, certainly. I mean, if, if you think like, um, uh, just think about it as uh, about a pound an hour. <laughs> there you go. Well, there we go. Does that you, work? Yeah. <laughs> the JRPG you can spend if you've got a pound an hour to put away. <laughs> uh, you can see it yourself. It looks pretty good. Uh, we've given it a whopping what? Um, well, we've given it an eight. An eight. So it's, it's, it's a good eight out of ten experience. Really good value. You don't see that on the uh, off air, but I've just touched Matt on the knee. So we'll end on that uncomfortable <laughs> note. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and do subscribe for more great daily videos on the CVG video channel and check out our written review on CVG. Mm -hmm.